What we have here is an AGP 256 megabyte ASUS video card. Um, this was about to go in the trash along with this tower, this tower, and that tower. Oh, not to mention this motherboard. And I said to the guy, whoa, I'll take this stuff. So, I didn't really get a chance to look at this very well until earlier yesterday. And I tried installing it in my HP tower. Turns out it's too long, like the connections on it are way too long. I tried installing it in that newer tower up there. Same problem, it's too long. I highly doubt I have a computer in this room that will accept this card. I, I guarantee you guys I don't even have one that will support this kind. Like, there's four different kinds of AGP slots. There's times one, times four, times eight, which is in this tower, and that tower. And the last one is times 16. The thing that's different about this this card is that if you see here the slot is really long and then there's a tiny slot there. If you look at the card it's opposite. The tiny slot is up here. Like, it, it, it just doesn't make sense. It, it, it's a little odd. Shouldn't the card go this way to match the picture? I don't know. I don't have any computers in this room that will accept this card. And it's really nice too. I The guy told me it works, but he just upgraded. And this is what he upgraded. Whoa. Oops. This is what he upgraded to. An ATI Radeon HD4670, which is a one gigabyte video card, I believe. Basically for HD gaming. Yeah, it's a one gigabyte. Yep, would have loved to have that card, but oh well. I don't know what I should do. I don't know if I should try selling this or try trading it for a video card that is 256 megabytes, but different connections that will fit my tower. I don't know. Like, should I sell this for 50 bucks? Like, I don't want to rip people off because it's old. You know, people are looking for a one gig video card. But, you know, I just, I want to run Windows 7 on this tower really badly. Because, I just want to see how it will run with the arrow effects. You know, I just, ugh. It's, it's hard to, hard to say. Just let me uh, know, you guys. Should I try selling it or should I try trading it for one that has the right connections for my computer? Because this card's useless to me. So it's going to remain in this box until, until you guys decide what I should do. Heck, you can tell that the other video card was in here because it's slightly longer than this one. My god, it would have taken up a lot of room, especially in this tower. This is another thing that guy almost threw out. It's not an ASUS motherboard. It is a Pentium 3 Windows 98 motherboard. 
just put it inside a misleading box. It has the foaming in it. Would you look at that? Oh, and it's a A open motherboard. Would you look at that? I don't think this motherboard was ever ever used. And of course, the video card slot is slightly different. I think this is the kind of AGP slot that the HP tower has. Pretty sure, I can't remember. But it has three RAM modules. One, two, three, four, five. It has five PCI slots and PCI Express, only two. And it takes one of those cartridge processors, and I do know where it is. Um, I think, oh wait, oh shoot, I, I think I left it in in the car. Whoops. Oh well, I'll get it later later on. I'm not sure if I left it in the car or not. I don't even know if I can't, if I got one. Jeez, my memory is really bad, you know. Jeez, might as well whack me off right now. But anyway, the capacitors in this computer are perfectly fine. They haven't been blown. They're properly soldered. Heck, an old Windows 98 motherboard with awesome capacitors. These are built to last. Two USB, I think 1.0 ports two PS2 ports, serial, printer, and that's it. And I think it came with a video card, I'm not sure. I have to find out where they are, I'm not sure if I got them or not. But this is something that I can get into. Might as well scribble the word that says ASUS on it because it's not an ASUS motherboard. It's absolutely different. Next. This is another thing that I purchased. It is a Philips Audio PC400 surround sound system. I believe it is 5.1 surround sound. Yeah, 5.1 has six speakers, and this is what I have. I have six. Um, Pay $20 for it at Value Village, and it works, but there's a slight problem with it. This speaker here, like, I've looked up a lot of information about this particular model, and this piece right here is usually the one that fails. Um, or it doesn't always fail, like it just has a problem. Sometimes it has some weird scratchy, stacky type sounds. It, it, it happens on random occasions, but not all. Like it's fine right now, but Usually it will make a, a funny sound, which it's currently not doing because I'm filming. Usually this happens to me all the time. If there's something wrong with an item, if I try to film and show you guys, it doesn't even do it. The next minute you know I turn the camera off, bam, the problem starts. I'm like, oh, geez, give me a break. So, it's a very nice surround sound system. There's speaker there. Oh. That's the sound it makes. It's just 
It's a funny sound that it makes. I don't know. It'll go away, but it it drives me nuts sometimes, so I just put it under the bed where I don't have to hear it. It, it just sounds like a mouse squeaking in my ear, and it just bothers me. So, there's one speaker here, one up there, one right next to the piano, I'm not sure. You can just barely see, it's that little black thing. Um, there's a speaker over there. So let's see, I got, I counted one, two, three, four. Oh, the fifth one's back there underneath that pillow. I knew I was missing one. And the last one is the subwoofer, which is underneath the, the desk. So there's six speakers and they all work. I just don't know how to fix that squeaking problem, but it stopped. So I can continue playing the music. Okay, I'm gonna... So, let's continue this video. Oh, stupid fuck. Anyway, as I was saying, ah, that's better. As I was saying, the speakers are fine. It's just, it's just that one, that one speaker that I cover there. It, it just, ugh can't stand it when it squeaks like that. I would love to play some songs for you guys, like kind of crank it up a bit, but I can't. You know, I've been filming almost all night here. Like I started filming around 2.11 in the morning. And now, look what time it is. It's 6.09 in the morning. God, am I ever gonna have a problem trying to stay awake all day. Anyway, uh, let's see. So I bought that USB card, those speakers, and I bought this screwdriver set or socket set. I don't know what the hell it is. Just went to a yard sale and they sold it for two bucks. You know? Like, it was just these two ladies who sold it. Of course it's two ladies. If it were, if there was um, a man selling this, he'd probably sell it for an outrageous price. Probably 20 bucks. But thank God it was just the ladies. Because they know how to sell something really cheap. So now I can finally work on my computers with better tools. I don't know what the hell this is. It's just a box full of wall nails to hang up pictures. I don't see a hammer in this. What, am I supposed to use the butt end of a screwdriver? Boom. I don't know. I don't know why I got nails in here. I don't have a hammer to go with this. But it makes a perfect toolkit when working on computers. Speaking, oh wait, never mind, I forgot to show one thing. One more thing before I get to the computers. This is a 3Com dual bus speed switch 16. It's basically an office ethernet or network connector. Um, I don't have the cord for it. This was one of the items that guy was about to throw out. And he asked if I wanted, and I said, uh, sure, whatever. Ow. Um, it has 16 Ethernet ports on it, which is 
mind-boggling to me. It's a lot. Imagine how slow my internet will be if I were to hook all my computers up to that. Besides, I don't really think I'll use this. I don't even think I need it. I already got the um, the Speedstream wireless Ethernet adapter. I don't really need this. I don't know. I'll decide what its fate will be. I'm not really sure right now. Now, on to the computers. Okay, I gotta get that one down. Okay. Oh. Okay, so, oh. Okay, so what we have here is an IBM NetVista computer tower. It's basically um, the second version of the NetVista family. Actually, third version. The first one was a white computer case and it had no USB ports. The second version was a black computer case with USB ports. And the third one was the tower. Yeah, I know a lot about NetVistas. I've seen a lot. This one is a lot newer than the NetVista desktop version. Because the desktop version doesn't have audio jacks on the front, and it doesn't have a FireWire port on the front. Oh, wait, that's not FireWire. Where is it? I don't know what that tiny port is up there. It is a Pentium 4 designed for XP. I believe it has 512 megs of RAM. Oh, it does have um, a CD rewritable drive. <coughs> Damn it. Um, two PS2, uh, yeah, two PS2 ports, two USB ports, two serial ports, printer port, Ethernet, multi multimedia jacks and an, a video card and it's a really nice video card too. Also shockingly has a wireless card in it. Woohoo! Been looking for one. They don't sell wireless cards with antennas on them anymore. And that is what a firewire card looks like. So yeah. You know, when I first got this computer, I was so stupid, I, I didn't even notice it had a, a antenna sticking out of the butt. And what I did was, I just tilted it up, sat it down, right on its rear, and I totally bent the pen, uh, the pin inside it. Oop, just fell out. This pin right here, I totally bent it. I was so pissed off. I was like, ah, oh, shit. A computer with a wireless card that works. There goes the clock again. There it goes. Um, you know, I never really got a computer with an actual working wireless card. And I thought I broke it, but I stuck it in one of my computers, and no, it's fine. The card works just fine. I'm gonna take the antenna out so that way I don't bend it. I do have a wireless card, but the antenna's busted. The card works itself, but it doesn't work without the antenna. <coughs> Let's pop the case open. Jesus. There we go. Now, let's see what we got on the inside. We have a 20 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive. I believe 512 megs of RAM, I am not sure. The video card is really nice, but there's a problem. I set the camera down again. It's a nice video card, it is 
128 megabytes in size, the exact same amount as the HP computer, and its brother. They both have the exact same amount. This video card has seen better days because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven capacitors with kind of swollen looking tops on the capacitors. The green ones though are absolutely fine. It's just the darker color ones are kind of pudgy looking. Um, another problem. This fan is just really, oh, there it goes. You see, this is what I mean. I think that's what happens when the fan stops working. Your capacitors swell up. Ooh, there's a lot of rust in there. Oh boy. There it goes, okay. Look at that. It is dirty. It is rusty. Oh my. Like, jeez, was this thing in water or did it see moisture or something? Jeez. It's really dirty in that heat sink. I think someone was smoking at some point because it looks yellow. And there's a lot of rust around the middle and the reason why the the fan itself came off so easily is that in the middle there's that little plastic ring there's a piece broken off it so that's why the fan is tilting around in there cuz it's not really being held in by anything so I don't know guys I think I'm gonna have to either chuck this card or try to find a replacement fan. I did try turning this computer on and the video card still works, but I wasn't able to boot into the operating system because I got a blue screen of death. So I'm going to have to resolve that issue by reinstalling the operating system. Because I don't know what it has for a CPU or what it has for RAM. Oh, and the video card, like the AGP slot in there, that's what it looks like in the HP tower. So, that's what it looks like. No way in hell will this blue one fit in there. This music, ugh, why do I even have it on here? Jesus. So I'm gonna have to work on this a bit. And sorry for making the videos so long, guys. It's just. It's a lot of computers, and really, I just don't. I just don't want to make one video at a time. I just want to get it all done and over with. Next we have a custom built computer case with these little buttons and I have fat pudgy fingers so you can imagine how difficult it is. Hey, I don't care if I'm a fat person. Fat hands. Even though it's difficult to work with something. Now, when I got this computer the guy put duct tape on it to keep the side panel on, so I suspect that there's a problem. And there's a little dent in there, and I could. I can actually feel something in that area. Well, let's take the tape off, because he, he told me that there's stuff in there. Like, I don't know what kind of stuff, but he just put whatever parts he had in there, he told me. So I'm just gonna rip off this duct tape. Oh, I don't know. I, I just hope shit doesn't come falling out, because if it does... Ugh. Do I dare remove that one piece of tape? 
Yeah, I don't give a shit. I'll do it anyway. Does everyone know what day it is today? It's called VCAM Now Doesn't Give a Shit Today. Oh. Uh oh. Oh shit. Okay. It appears we have a hard drive bag. And it's gonna fall out, so I gotta. Oh. Wow, they packed this thing with a lot of shit. Oh. Jesus. That's really redneck. Use a rubber band to keep the case from falling off. How redneck is that? Hold on. What the hell fell out of this thing? A floppy drive. Heat sink fan, which is the exact same one that is in the HP tower. Cooler master. So call it loud master. It's so friggin' loud. Ah, circuit chips. And uh, kind of like a circuit board like thing. And a bag full of transistors and capacitors and just other sorts of crap in here. Oh, and a fuse. Damn it. I could have replaced something with that, but I threw that device out a long time ago. But anyway, look at all of this. There's like one, two, three. Four, five, six, six hard drives. A Seagate Barracuda. Not sure how much it is. Um, pretty sure there's a Mac store in there. I have no idea. Let's take a look. Oh, they put a knot in it, damn it. I guess the only way to get something open is to just rip it open. More elastics. God, I got whiplash from that one. Yep, so there's a Seagate. Not sure how much it is. A Mac store. 30 gig. It's a Diamond Plus 8. Heck, I'm not even sure if any of this works. He just told me he packed this case up with parts. And he sure did. It all came raining out. Now this is an old Quantum Fireball 20 gig. Awesome. This looks like my older Quantum drives. A hard drive still in a bag. I know what kind it is. I recognize it. It's a Fujitsu. Fujitsu what? It's from 2000 to 2003. I don't know what the hell that means. Oh, 2000 to 2003. Oh, we got another Maxdorf uh, Diamond Max Plus. It's also, oh, it's a 20 gig. Gotta be careful with them. Oh, the dreaded Western Digital wrapped up in its rubber casing, which is a definitely an accident waiting to happen. And it's a 6.4 gigabyte hard drive. Oh wait, it's not Max or Seagate. What the hell am I talking about? Jesus. Well, 
I did have a Mac store hard drive and it was wrapped up in this rubber thing and it said Mac store on it but I guess Seagate can be an asshole too and do that right there is the breathing hole it's a fairly large one too I can tell because it's just a big lump right there Wow. So, that's all the hard drives. What else is going to rain down on me? Oh, no way. This is the Pentium 3 CPU for that Pentium 3 motherboard, which is in there. Okay, I guess he put it in the computer case for me. But Oh my god, there's a lot of dust in there. At least the fan moves and it's not broken. I might be able to build myself a computer. Who knows? A RAM stick? I'm not sure. Oh, it's a 64 megabyte stick. Yeah, it's 64. Oh, sweet. Ethernet cables. This time they're probably about a foot long. What the hell is that? Holy shit, look at all that. It's a long ass Ethernet cable. Two. Sweet. This one I'm having a bad feeling about. I'm not sure if the wires have broken in this one. And I seem to have a lot of bad luck with these Ethernet cables because the plastic clip breaks off. Here's the reason why I don't like custom-built computers. Reason number one. Some custom-built computers don't even have a model number or a brand name. This Dell over here has a brand name, which is Dell, and the model number is GX110. This one, you don't see anything. All this is down here is just a website. It's called www.bestformoney.com. Like that, that's not a, uh, it's not even a mall number or, or a name. Like the only way for me to find out what the mall of this thing is and what the name of it is, is to look on the board. You know, I have to search all over the board to find out know, what the name and model number of it is. Because if I'm looking for drivers, I have to know what the model number is and what the name is. So it's a little bit of extra work. I would prefer to have a name and model number on the front. That's how I like my computers. Uh, reason number two the power button. Um, some custom built computer towers have small buttons and they're really big pain in the ass for my fat fingers. Um, to reset the computer I think I would have to use my pinky which is right here. And the big power button it's not a problem with my finger or thumb. <sighs> okay. Oh. <clears throat> This one I'm not really a, f a big fan of because, oh wait a tick. Okay, so this thing apparently does, it does have USB. You wanna know where the USB ports are? They're on the friggin' front. How the hell am I supposed to get to that when this dumb triangle is covering it? This is a custom built computer that I'm not going to get along with. And that's how you get to the USB ports, by breaking off a useless piece of shit. Ugh. Uh-oh. Oh shit, no. <sighs> Apparently, what I just did there was not a good idea because number one I have no friggin clue to where these cables go 
and these cables are connected to the USB ports. So that triangle I broke off wasn't even supposed to come off. Not that I know of. But hey, a custom built computer has to have USB ports on the front. But really? Whoops. Like, it's nice that they're there, but. Oh shit. I'm gonna have to go on the internet and try to find out what the model number is of the board and to see if there's some sort of blueprint of how the cables are connected. Besides, this is really stupid. Like, oh. I don't really got much tables in here, so I have to use my lap. Um, I don't know why they would have this triangle here. What would have been nice is if the triangle would lift up or just kind of slide downwards. I don't know. So, there's another reason that they hide the damn USB ports. Which I'm a big fan of. I love USB. Now, don't make fun of me about this, but my favorite color is purple. Not light purple, just the dark color purple. And this is a purple motherboard, which is pretty cool. Never thought I would see one. But apparently, we have some sort of a problem here. A naughty capacitor has blown up, but I don't know where. Usually, if a, ca if a capacitor blows up, it usually comes out through the top. I know, I know it's not these two. I think it's probably this little one right here. And probably that one. If it was that little one, it sure did a hell of a job. It just spread it everywhere. I'm going to try to see if I can wipe that off. I'm not sure if the computer tower even works for that matter. So I'm going to try to wipe some of that crap off. I'm not sure if it will come off. But, ugh. it's not hard to try, and this is a damp cloth, so I'm going to try to rub in there. Ugh. Okay, so it is coming off, so that's a good thing. It hasn't ruined the motherboard in any way. It's just, I don't want to get this stuff on my hands, I don't know if it's toxic or anything. I'm pretty sure it is. Yep, just a tiny dab of this. I'm going to have to clean this out a little bit later on because I can't do this holding a camera. But I got most of most of it out. I just got to get around the capacitor and stuff. So, but this computer looks like it can be fixable. I just have to go on the internet and look up the blueprints for the USB. Oh, okay, hold on. I think I found it. Okay, so this is where the USB goes. It says USB 2, 3, which is basically the ones on the front. But I have to know where each of these go. So I'm still going to have to look up on the internet to where these connectors go. But I do know that this is where they're supposed to connect. Right there. Jeez. Well, at least the owner was decent enough to leave all the connectors in place on the board for the power buttons and reset switch. Oh, and the indicator light. But I just wish they would have connected the USB cables. I'm pretty sure they didn't know they were there either. I don't know where the CPU is. I'm pretty sure I have one. Let's see if I do. That's <clears throat> yeah, my RAM bag full of junk. 
but I see a CPU in there. Got ya. Uh-oh. There's some bent pins on here. I don't know if this will fit, but I'll have to mess around with it. Well, as it turns out, this processor doesn't fit it. The pins are slightly different. Like, it does fit just a little bit. But the only thing that doesn't fit is pretty much this side. So you can easily tell that the things just rocking around in there and the pin like the pins aren't bent like they're perfectly straight but you know I'm pretty sure it had a AMD processor in there I, I bet my dollar on it anyway a spare Pentium 3 I'm gonna have to wait until processor comes around for this thing Cause it, it looks like it has the the get up and go you know it has that um, cool look to it yeah, it says November 2001 or something I don't know there's some sort of date on here but anyway, I'm probably going to store this computer up and um, wait until that processor comes around. But until then, I'm going to be looking up on the internet for the board's mall number, which I believe is right there. K7VMM. Revision 1.2A. Hmm. So, that's a rainy day project, which I can't really do anything about right now. But soon, it will be a working computer at some point. Now over here, we have a, a Dell Optiplex GX110. It's a newer model of the GX100, you know. and. In order to pop the, the side panel off, which doesn't look like it's fastened all the way, you just push this button. Which should pop the cover off. There we go. Not really much in there. There's no hard drive. No RAM. But they were decent enough to leave the processor and sound card and optical drive in there. So really the Dell doesn't have much. I'm pretty sure after opening the lid, I'm pretty sure it set off the, the built-in security system. So the next time this computer is turned on, it will give me a message saying that the cover was previously removed. It has that little feature in there that I just don't really think that they're needed. I don't know. It, it's fastened all the way, but it just pops out like that. I don't know. This is a computer that I remember very well as a kid. Um, a long time ago, uh, when I didn't live in this house, um, I lived in a Victorian house, and my idiot father, who I don't see anymore, no questions please, um, basically gave us this computer, like it was basically a computer from work, and it wasn't a computer that I would call mine, this isn't my first computer. Um, the Compact Presario 2200 is my very first personal computer, like for my very own. This one was kind of like a computer that I had to share. So, you know, it wasn't really fun. Now, it is an NEC Ready 7620FS. Kind of an odd looking tower, but that's how I remember the other one that we had. 
has that old fashioned power button off and on thing. I think just a, a four, four speed CD ROM drive. I don't know what this plastic piece is right here. I'm very shocked to see that this thing has USB ports on it. It's just, I never noticed a computer like this to have that. And shockingly, it does. Okay, so this computer has definitely seen a lot of usage. Um, looks like the power supply is growing a beard. What is that? Oh, it's just, um... Really, I don't know what that is. There's something shaking around in there. But anyway... This one is missing a hard drive as well. I think the only one that person didn't really bother with was the IBM Net Vista Tower. Didn't bother removing the hard drive from that one. But he did bother removing the one from the Dell and this one. Ugh. This one takes the older style RAM sticks. Ah, oh, shit. The reason why I say that is because usually when I get these old computers, and if they take the PC100 RAM sticks, such as this kind right here, I donate them. But if it's an old computer tower with the smaller RAM sticks where you can't really upgrade them, I, I just, I don't really know what to do with them. You know, I don't have much use for these. But you know, they're vintage and they're old. I think this computer still works, but I'm probably going to clean it out early. Early on today. This is a huge modem. Yeah, it's really big. So I'm going to have to clean this out. Make a video about it. Definitely shave this beard off this power supply it's just disgusting it smells like an old basement it smells like the basement at my old victorian house that i used to live at Ugh. i always hate the smell in there but it was home i don't really like this place it's just too modern for me so yeah guys that's pretty much it you know there's this is the only thing left. Oh yeah, there's one more thing I want to show you guys. This here is an AGP video card, but it's very unique in some way. And I've never seen these before. This video card was manufactured in. Oh, gotta wait for the damn clock to ring. It's Nine o'clock in the morning. Oh boy. Okay, so anyway, sorry about that. This video card was manufactured in 1998 and it is called a Matrox. A mat rocks or mat rocks, I don't know. Um, the reason why this thing is unique in some way is because it has that extra memory module on it. You don't see video cards like that. At least I don't. Like, I don't know what the capacity is. Like, the limit of memory it can take. I'm going to try to put in a 256 megabyte stick and see how it runs with that. If it if it works, heck, you never know. It it could be worth using. And this is a, one of the first video cards I've ever seen with a flat surface. Like it is so flat, I can rub my thumb on it, and it doesn't get caught on anything. 
unlike these video cards, you flip them over and there's just that rough side to them. So, yeah. So this is um, really unique in some way. It would have been a lot better if it had a S video out in uh, I think a DVI port on it. I don't know what they're called. I think it's DVI. That'd be really cool if it had that. Well, that's all the time we have, everybody. Um, I apologize for the really, really long videos. I didn't mean to make them this long, but you know, I just don't don't want to make a lot of videos. Like, I just don't want to make this video and that video and that video because it's just so much to to edit and stuff. I just prefer to make one big long video.